A couple days ago, my parents and I drove to Rochester, New York to check out Stever's Candy Shop and I shot a lot of footage, so I'm going to break this video up into two parts. This part I wanted to show first because it showed a lot of the candy shop and the candy shop right now is very Halloween oriented, so I wanted to post that before Halloween. Uh, you're also going to see some really cool uh, packaging stuff, but you're going to want to stick around for part two as well because in a couple days I will also be posting that video and we're going to show a lot of really cool machinery that they have that we just don't have. Uh, they have some stuff that we have just way bigger. Uh, they have a way bigger facility, so I think you guys are going to find it really interesting. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. So Danielle is packing an assortment. Uh, we're actually doing some of our staging for holiday boxes, and, and then that'll go up in the cold room. So this morning she decided from our stock what she wanted to go in the assortment. She made her list and went up and pulled the chocolates, and now she is packing the boxes. And she's just getting one now that's getting fussed over before it goes in. But this is what a, the finished box will look like. I like that. And then they will get a uh, covering uh, and padding. Uh, this is the lid. And then they'll get all wrapped and they'll be up in that cold room until we put the candy out, uh, Christmas candy out after Thanksgiving. Mm. So we use the hinged cups. Yeah, I notice that's uh, very yep. different than how we do it. Yeah. Yep. And then oh, whoa, I didn't realize this was a yeah. giant Lazy Susan. Yes, it's a <laughs> giant Lazy Susan. Is there like a pedal on there or something? No, she just flipped a switch on the uh, wall. Okay. And you can put your hand on it to stop it if you need to. Mm. Um, and then using both hands, she can pack two boxes at one time. Wow. And she'll go right around and fill each cup. Uh, we have an assortment we do called our Holiday Assortment that we pack over 700 pounds of. Um, and we've been making the candy getting ready for that. Uh, it's a two day job. We actually set another table like Dan, where the way Danielle's working right here. So two people are working off the table and a third person is weighing. Um, so we can pump out the, the number we need for that assortment in a short amount of time with three people working on it. Normally the packer is doing all of that. They're packing and they're weighing um, and getting the cart the chocolates put into the cartons. Hmm. So I have, I have two questions like one where does someone get even buy a table like that? And then two <laughs> does it take a while to get used to that? Like I'm sure the first time you're like, ah, like yeah, getting when, everything. Whenever <laughs> we whenever we start somebody new I tell them they don't have to turn the table on sure. they can just <laughs> they can just turn it by hand until yeah. they're comfortable and then they can just pack one box for a hmm. while instead of two until they're comfortable um, with doing a couple at a time. Um, this, I believe, was just kind of handmade. Um, we have the parts for another one somewhere. We used to have it set up on second floor, but once we got that bagging machine, the packing table went away. We didn't utilize it enough to make it worthwhile. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's very simple. It's just a motor driven underneath and uh, just two round tables, one smaller than the other. And, you know. Hmm. Works great. Yeah, yeah, you see they you see them in places where they're they're called a, I think it's a carousel where the, the chocolates move this way oh, yeah. and you stand at it and the four boxes come up and you pack your candy and then the next level and you pack your candy. Um, it takes up a lot less space. This is just what we've like had. More vertical yeah. space? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, this is just what we've always had and always done, and the customers love it because yeah. they stand at the counter and they uh -huh. see. And we still have customers that remember Kevin's dad sitting at the table, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a nostalgic thing for people. And the hinge cups are a lifesaver. As yeah. you guys know, there's very little time for idle hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's always jobs going on. So Holly and Isabel are working on truffle bars. We sell a lot of those through the season, so we try to get them packaged and ready to go um, now when we have the chance. We sell them all year long. They're an easy pickup item and they make a great stocking stuffer. So while they're waiting on customers, there's always a side shop set up. Oh, yeah. And Kevin, Kevin is right now cutting the pads for the boxes that Danielle is packing, but he's working in our mailing area. Um, at Christmas time, he and I work in tandem uh, where I'm stuffing the boxes and wrapping them, making the um, mailing label, and then he actually puts them in the carton, stuffs the carton, puts the mailing label on, and then they go on a cart out to the garage to be picked up. So um, it's very tight space, but we get it done. <laughs> we know how that goes. That'll take mm -hmm. this thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is there a candy place anywhere that has enough space? I don't think I don't so. Think <laughs> no, I don't think so. Right now the store is ready for Halloween. It's a 
week, less than a week now. So when people, customers first come in, we like to have the holiday, whatever the thing is that's going on that they see first. So we have our Halloween molds uh, wrapped and ready to go. Uh, and then uh, there's another center shelf that's full of Halloween as well. Everything will get switched over when Halloween's finished. Everything will be turkeys. And Thanksgiving's a big holiday for us. A lot of shops um, go right into Christmas. But for us, Hall Thanksgiving is very big. We sell a lot of turkeys, a lot of candy and nuts, a lot of special packed assortments. So we do not put Christmas out until Thanksgiving is over. Hmm. A lot of places do skip Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's no. not right. It's not <laughs> right. It's not right. And, uh, you know, our customers count on us having that yeah. candy. Um, Kevin usually comes over Thanksgiving morning and works for about four or five hours and puts quite a bit of candy, Christmas candy, out on Thanksgiving Day mm -hmm. uh, while I'm home getting the dinner ready. So when p customers come in Friday, they do have some Christmas mm -hmm. candy to buy. But then what happens is we uh, close that Sunday. We come in along with three other employees and work about a nine-hour day and completely transform the, wow. sh the store. Yeah. So when they come in the Monday following Thanksgiving, all the bigger shelves are up, all the bigger displays mm -hmm. are up, all the Christmas molds are out, everything is out. So it's a big, big you guys transformation. You like a big storage unit to hold all the decorations? Because you guys seem to have like a lot for Halloween. Well, so you got a lot yeah, for Christmas this is a big building. <laughs> There's a whole yeah. third floor that's... Um, Folded boxes, display materials, the break room, there's a kitchen and everything for staff to have uh, lunch. So yeah, it's a big old building. Yeah. A lot of nooks and crannies. A lot of <laughs> nooks and crannies. And believe me, they're all filled. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the candy that we have that you've been seeing in process mm -hmm. and in the cold room, here's, here are our displays. Um, We've got the French creams. I'm not sure if Kevin talked to you about those at all. Yes, he showed us his stash. We've had we've had people ask. For yeah, that we, I didn't even know what they were. It's a very old-fashioned mm -hmm. piece, and it's a very time-consuming so piece. Very um, like it's like a hard sugar shell, but very smooth and creamy. Exactly, on the okay. exactly. Yep, and the, the the outer sugar shell creates a longevity to mm -hmm. the piece. It keeps the piece nice and soft in the center. Who needs chocolate for everything? That's <laughs> right. And then we make a maple version as well, which is very popular. Oh, I bet you. Yeah. Uh, and then the patties, peppermint and wintergreen, our famous caramels that you saw back in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That we sell them this way, and then we also have them loose in the case for certain times of the year, and it's one of our most popular pieces. Then we move on. These are our five boxed assortments. So all the candy you saw up in the cold room and the stock boxes, that becomes all of these assortments. Uh, and, um, and somebody gifts wraps all of these. Yep, we wrap every box. Mm -hmm. uh, losing my hat. Um, and then our paper gets tr uh, changed to red for Christmas, and we stay in the red paper right through Valentine's yeah. Day. Mm -hmm. And then we go back to the springy mm -hmm. paper. Right now we've got some fall as a choice as well. Um, then we make all of the candies that you see here. We do a lot of table work, which is the bark. We make the layered mints, um, and we make nut barks. Um, we also started a couple of years ago making inclusion barks. So we have an Oreo bark. Mm -hmm. We have a caramel pretzel sea salt bark, a potato chip bark, and we just started a s'mores bark. Um, we I wonder where we got that too. idea. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's been like the summer of s'mores. Yeah. S'mores everything. We right. even made s'mores ribbon candy. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Why wow. not? I, had, I missed that one. Uh -huh. um, this is the butter crunch you saw on the trays mm -hmm. upstairs. That's the way we box and package that. And then there's some things we don't make here. Boston Fruit Slice Company has been around for people ask us for fruit slices hundred over yeah, a hundred years. They're hard to find. Yeah, and uh, they're the best company. They really have it down. So mm -hmm. we always have fruit slices. Um, they're very popular. Uh, Meltaway is one of our best sellers. Uh, just a very smooth, um, solid block of chocolate, mm. um, and we make them in the different flavors: orange, mint, coffee, and then a d there's a dark chocolate version as well. Um, they, they literally, when somebody asks what's your best seller, mm. we usually say... What makes it say, melt away? Um, the coconut oil that's in there, so when you bite into it, if you bite into a piece of solid chocolate, there's a snap. Yeah. With the meltaways, it's just silky smooth mm -hmm. and just melts in your mouth. Hmm. So do you, you add the coconut oil to that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yep. So yep. it's just chocolate and coconut oil? Just pretty much, hmm. and then the flavor. Interesting. Yes, and uh, they get poured out on, on the big trays, they're cut by hand and then they're packaged. And we use the hinged cups. You can see they're in the paper cups in mm -hmm. here. We just um, have a smaller version and a smaller slide than mm -hmm. you saw Danielle using um, to slide those in the boxes. So they're very easy. I mean, there's a lot of them, but they're very easy to move right through, mm -hmm. you know. 
then we do all the dipped fruits. Um, we do peaches and pears, apricots, ginger, orange peel, which we can't keep on the shelf. Mm -hmm. It's a big seller. Mm. Um, and then dip nuts, more bark. We started an orange chip bark. Uh, we started as a fall piece, mm -hmm. and it's so popular we have so it all year long. So that's orange hard candy. Yes, yeah. citrus, very citrusy. So you have the nice citrus and the burst mm -hmm. of orange with the dark chocolate. So it's yeah, it's a very good piece. Um, then going into the through the archway, we have the famous peanut brittle, which mm -hmm. Kevin and Jeff. Do you ever cover that in chocolate? We have a piece in the case called Nut Brittle, okay. where he, instead of pulling it out like you pull peanut brittle, mm -hmm. he pours it out and uses a roller cutter okay. and cuts it into mm -hmm. a rectangular pieces and then they're enrobed. We do a uh, Nut Brittle, which is peanut brittle, and we do one we call Nut Patch, which is made with cashews. Okay. So it's a little different eating piece. Uh, then we do Can all the clusters. So we have peanut, peanut and butter. raisin, cashew, oh, coconut. And then the nut glazes, we just started those. Once the weather turned cold, we do a cashew and a okay. pecan. And you guys do um, these are our inclusion barks we were talking about. And we added the white jelly bean, which mm -hmm. proved very popular at Easter that we still have kept yeah. it on. Oh, so like white chocolate jelly bean bark? Yes. Oh. And we did a Fruity Pebbles one at, at oh, Easter did you? time. And well, I think we tried to do it for Easter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had one customer come in and she just said, you cannot stop making this. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the, the colors. Creamy, it's the colors and the creamy and then mm -hmm. the chew of the fruity jelly yep. beans. Mm -hmm. They're they're really, really good. It's really good. Because you could probably get away with gummy bears in there, too. You probably <laughs> could, but we already dipped gummy Sky's bears. The limit. <laughs> we dipped Swedish fish and gummy bears. In fact, you can see how popular yes. the gummy bears are. There's <laughs> not a single one on the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the dipped orange slices, we mm -hmm. added that a couple of years ago. Um, that's very popular with us. Um, we roast our own nuts here. Uh, did Kevin show you the nut roaster in the kitchen? Yes, yep. Did, yeah. yeah, and then we just started sponge candy. Um, so is that something that you guys make? The sponge? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, oh, okay. he can yeah. show you. Did You'll have to get one of the okay. sponge boxes <laughs> down. Um, yeah, we just started that. We aim for the 1st of October, um, hopefully. <laughs> well, he can talk to you better about making it than I can. The, the problem that's with the sponge is if you can start making it, and then if you have two weeks of rainy weather, mm. you can't make it. Yes. Yeah. So until it really gets cold, like November, December, then you're full steam ahead with it. And we make it right through, pretty much right through Easter he makes it, but it lasts until like through Mother's Day. So, and then we're done with it for the summer. We start it. Start again. Um, so the cashew crumble is a piece he makes seasonally in the fall. It's uh, wonderful. It's like a brittle, but it's different. It really is a crumble. When you bite into it, it crumbles like in a your mouth. Wood. Little bit, a little bit. Yes, yeah. made with cashews, and then he rolls it out on a bed of coconut. Oh, fun. And then the batch oh, gets it it's gets kind flipped. It's kind of tropical-ish. Yes, so it gets coconut on both sides. Uh -huh. so it's and it's very not, buttery. It's not something you should like eat in the car by biting into it. <laughs> <laughs> put the whole thing in your mouth. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But it would be perfect for a car ride. What yeah, are you talking yeah. about? Oh, as long as you put the whole thing in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. Dipped Oreos, of course. Twinkies, Nutter Butters, Crispy Treats. Awesome. All of those yeah. things that are yeah. so yeah. easy. Exactly. Exactly. And then we, did, uh, we do have a line of Rochester themed. Um, we did the Rochester bar several years ago with a local artist where she designed the artwork for us. A um, couple things have changed. There's now the big bridge downtown, uh, Frederick Douglass Bridge I think, um, that's not on here. But we have the Flower City bars. We also have Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass, both in chocolate. Very popular with Rochesterians. Um, then some of the usual things that people expect in a candy store, lots of caramels, dipped shortbreads, malt balls. Oh, okay. And we found that um, if you do a small amount of our popular things, people don't have to buy a whole half pound. Yeah. So we do what we call round bars, where they can get pretty much any of the clusters we make. We make in a round bar. And then the croquettes, like you saw upstairs, they can just buy a two-pack. Uh, in the fall, we do one with Reese's we'll Pieces because of the colors. Even the butter crunch can just buy a couple yeah. of boxes. Yeah. Yeah, we call these car goodies. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. M and M patty. Yep. The kids love them. They're mm -hmm. colorful. They think they're cookies, but you know, <laughs> that's fine. And then uh, even our creams, uh, we package those in little three packs, so they don't have to. Stand it, yeah, sure. exactly, and they line. can just pick up the ones that they want. Yeah, Some funny. of these things are hard to keep up with at Christmas, and right. we usually sell out, but that's fine. We gives people jobs in January. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a line of seventy-two percent. 
um, which th that kind of spiked a few years ago with the higher cocoa, but w there's a, it does have a loyal following. Mm -hmm. So we have kept up with it. We do an almond bark, a plain disc, some bars. We usually do a seasonal mold. Mm -hmm. This holiday we did leaves. Uh, and then we have some high cocoa truffles along with some dipped items, cranberries and blueberries, that kind of thing. And that's kind of the candy store. We still have a holdout for some hard candy, but that's getting harder and harder to <laughs> get. Uh, yeah. Hard candy companies, mm -hmm. other than like you guys yeah. making stuff by hand, some of it's just kind of going away. Mm. Yes, it is. Yep. Well, it, before we moved to our new store, we were actually thinking of discontinuing the hard candy yeah. because um, we only made spice flavors, yeah. you know, um, wintergreen, peppermint, yeah. uh, those types of old-fashioned flavors. And we were making less each year to we were making a nine-pound flavor. And oh. it was making like 63 all pounds. And that, that was it. We were like, why bother? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then when we moved to our new store, we're like, well, let's try fruit flavors. Let's try this. And the YouTube it took, uh, yeah, <laughs> took, <laughs> took off. off. So now... Right. We did super sour hard candy last week, mm -hmm. and it sold out in 12 hours. Wow. It was like 150 pounds. So we did it again yesterday. Yeah. That's already sold out. Wow. So we it's might crazy. do it again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so much work. It's so it labor intensive. It I, is. you know, I give you guys a lot of credit. For well, I give you a lot it. of credit. <laughs> <laughs> you do more than we do, actually. Yeah. I mean, you you are a bigger business than we are. You sure. definitely are. Yeah. Make your own marshmallows and caramel. Cool. Kudos yeah. to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kevin's famous for his caramels. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Well, the marshmallows are nothing to speak. No, they <laughs> are not. That's my favorite. When we're closed in July for vacation uh -huh. and I come back here for yeah. something, that's, where, go to that's where I yeah. go to. I got to have a marshmallow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And remember, there is going to be a really cool part two coming up. And also, I know a lot of people who come to our store visit Niagara Falls as well. And you should know that Stever's Candy Shop is actually on the way to Niagara Falls. So you could actually stop at both places at the same time. And there will be a link down below to Stever's Candy as well as obviously our website. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stick around for part two and we'll see you next time.